Welcome to the Incarcerated Cape Part 1 Racial Segregation at Breakwater Prison. The large yellow building in the V&A waterfront with its magnificent turrets, as seen on Portswood Road today, ever since 1989 houses the University of Cape Town's Graduate School of Business. Next door is a pristine breakwater lodge. A lesser known fact is that the building one initially sees is only the industrial breakwater prison that was built in 1901 and not the original old breakwater prison of 1859. The old breakwater convict station was the largest convict station in the 19th century Cape Colony. Initially, segregation in 1859 followed American models that separated convicts according to their crime and the duration of their stay, and by 1863 racial integration was still seen as beneficial for increased control over convicts. The colonial ideologies of the 1860s were that white prisoners were initiators of revolt and planned escapes, while black prisoners were perceived to be innocent in nature. Charles Peer, the superintendent of convicts, argued that white military prisoners must be kept apart from the other white convicts in order to prevent their suspected organized escape. This is where racial integration plays its part. It was suggested that these white convicts be separated through iron screens during the night with black prisoners between them, relying on assumed cultural differences and language barriers between white and black convicts to act as a barricade. It was only in 1880, when racist discourses gained even more currency in colonial policies, that racial separation were enforced within institutions such as Breakwater Prison. Because of the sudden increase in white prisoners due to illegal diamond buying, since the discovery of diamonds in 1867 with the rise of the Mineral Revolution, the prisoner of prison officials were now pressured to implement racial segregation, especially after a strike initiated by both black and white convicts against the behaviour of prison officials in 1885. This strike was organised interracially through gatherings in the courtyard, the prisoners now united through unjust treatment and food rations. Racial segregation was therefore implemented as a preventative measure for strikes during the 1880s and 90s, and with it emerged a racialized form of penal discourses through systems of labor and reform. The first step was to physically segregate black and white convicts at night, which was finally officiated in 1892. By the end of the 19th century, convicts were assigned to different buildings, with black prisoners housed together for labour on the docks and white prisoners grouped together for industrial training. Total segregation followed in 1901, when most of Breakwater's black convicts were moved to the Beard Convict Station in Kimberley, and a new building, the Industrial Breakwater Prison, was erected to house 100 long-term white convicts until 1923. Thereafter, from 1926 to 1989, the still-standing industrial breakwater prison was used as a labour hostel occupied by black workers. Finally, in 1989, the University of Cape Town and the Breakwater Lodge placed a lease on the building and opened their doors to students and public. What remains of the original breakwater prison of 1859 is the feared treadmill further discussed in part 2 and a single wall in the nearby Portswood Hotel restaurant. For the even more enthusiastic historian or tourist, the Southern Sun Hotel houses an actual piece of the breakwater from which the prison got its name.